Well, welcome everyone. What a blessing to see all of you here. Some many faces I know and many that I don't. And I'm just, um, I don't know, I'm a little moved. I, uh, I sort of thought that after the really tragic events, I thought, was anyone gonna wanna show up for joy today? But um, I'm, really, I'm really grateful to see all of you here. Um, it's really, I think, uh, I think that more than ever, we just need to remember that this is part of what we've got to do if we're going to keep doing the work we need to do to fight um, and bring changes to the country. <sighs> so welcome. Thank you all for joining me and joining One Spirit um, to explore joy this evening. Um, just a quick show of hands since I can see you all here in the gallery or you can put up your virtual hand. Um, how many of you have either seen the documentary Mission Joy or read the Book of Joy? Curious. All right, wonderful. Good. So for some of you, you're going to be a little bit familiar with some of what we touch on. Tonight, we're going to actually watch the trailer for the documentary. Um, and some of the exercises and, and ideas that we're going to be talking about will come from that book and from the documentary. Um, we're also going to watch another uh, trailer um, from a lesser known movie called Following the Ninth, um, which I feel is very appropriate to talk a little bit about why joy now. I mean, we've always needed it, but you know, as I said, as we began, um, we're facing as ever really hard times. And if we're going to have the endurance to keep doing the work we need to do, we need joy and we need to cultivate it. So hopefully um, I'm going to hear a lot from all of you tonight. Uh, I have intentionally tried to bring myself in just a little um, because I really want to hear from all of you about your experiences and your ideas. And um, I want this to be community coming together around this right now. So thank you all for being here. And I'm just going to start by just grounding us a little bit. So um, I welcome you to just sit back comfortably. You can close your eyes or leave them open, however you're comfortable. Um, hmm, just follow your breath a little bit and come into your body. <sighs> And as you feel through your body, maybe doing a gentle scan, take a look at any parts where you're feeling any tension that you're holding on to right now, maybe in your jaw, in your throat, in your belly, maybe in your legs. Where are you holding on? What can you sort of release and let go of right now. Just take a few breaths, allowing yourself to exhale that tension. And as you release, check in with yourself. How are you arriving here? Are you scattered or hurried? Are you feeling peaceful or excited or sad? Now, I'd like for you to bring to mind something you are grateful for right now. And right now could be in this moment, it could be today, it could be this week, or maybe in this period of life, but what is it that you're really feeling some gratitude for right now? And as you bring this alive, as you bring this alive in you, just see how it lands in your body. Where does that gratitude show itself to you? Hmm. Wonderful. So, 
I'd like to welcome you all back here. And David, if you want, you can put us into gallery view so we can all see each other. And I just like to welcome everyone. And you know, there's actually a good number of people here. So I'd like to avoid any long storytelling, but just if everyone would be willing to speak into the room um, and you can just unmute yourself and share, but one or two words of just what it is you're feeling gratitude for right now. And I would like to hear from all of you. <laughs> I'll start, I'll start Emily. Emily. Um, um, I'm, I'm really, really grateful, grateful for, for, for creativity. creativity. I was, I was able, able to, to um, do, do some, some creative work, work in the last, last few days, days that, that helped me to lift up. Creativity. creativity. Thank, Thank you, Ben. I'll go next, if you don't mind. I'm Julie, and I'm grateful for my children. Mm. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Marshall, I'll share. Um, I'm grateful for relationships in my life and also for rest. I'll go next. Um, Judy Painter, I'm grateful for my life. I'm in the hospital and I uh, had a near uh, experience with being real close to where I didn't wanna go yet. So um, I'm gonna put my little face on, but uh, I'm grateful for life and joy. Hi everyone, I'm Carmen. And what came to me in that grounding moment was, I am grateful for my beautiful, healthy body. And if you know me at all, I don't put those words together usually in a sentence. <laughs> so I'm just gonna say that out loud and that's where I'm at today. I'm Lisa um, and I am grateful for or community. I'm Susie and I'm grateful for my grandchildren, my health and my time to be creative. I'm Mariam and I'm grateful right now that my most important relationships are at peace. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm grateful to see a friend I didn't expect to see here. Hi. I'm grateful for our rescue dog, Emma. I'm Jean, and I'm grateful for connecting this way that we're able to connect through the internet and uh, be with one another. And I'm grateful for all of you. Thank you, Jean. I'm Dominique, and I'm grateful for my connection to my daughter. I'm Diane, and uh, in this moment, I'm grateful for my niece, Marissa. Hi, I'm Elia, and I say that I'm feeling grateful for my body's ability to heal itself. And I'm grateful for the roasted vegetables that I just ate. <laughs> nice. I'm Jacqueline, and um, as you asked the question, I felt very grateful for God and um, connection to a source I trust. <clears throat> Thank you, Jackie. And Margaret, unfortunately, can't get her mic to work, but she is grateful to be here. So hopefully. Um, if you want to leave and try coming back in, Margaret, I'm sure David will let you in again if you want to give that a go. Would anyone else like to share? Yeah, hi. yeah I'm Gail. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm grateful for uh, my friends, um, some new friendships, and for uh, the gift of learning something every day. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you all so much. I am um, feeling a lot of gratitude for um, you being here. 
<laughs> um, but also for a recent trip I got to take out into the West and an opportunity to be around a lot of wonderful spiritual folk and really get grounded again. So thank you. Thank you all for sharing that. I, um, I think, uh, I think hearing other people's gratitude for me is always really inspiring. It's like sometimes when I'm in a real lull uh, to hear what other people are grateful for. I'm like, oh, right. I have that. And I have that. And I have that. And I have that. So, you know, I think like joy, gratitude can be a very contagious thing. Um, and so what I'd love to do right now is just watch the trailer for Mission Joy because I feel like the energy and the joy between those two men, uh, the Dalai Lama and the Archbishop Desmond Tutu is such a contagious thing. So David, if you wanna pull that up for us, that would be wonderful. Thank you. We are going to be free. Sex, sex. Did, did you say that? You are a monk, remember? <laughs> I've sometimes said to him, the cameras are on us. Honestly, the energy between them is eight-year-old boy. You are mischievous. <laughs> what is the purpose of your visit, sir? Just enjoy our friendship and talk about joy. I don't think you could find two people on the planet who are more different than the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu. One grew up in absolute poverty, the other grew up in a thousand room palace. Unfortunately, that person is Christian. Unfortunately, he's a Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of shared background. Both of them have deep history of struggle against authoritarian systems. The Tibetan people are being exterminated. Their culture and religion are being stamped out. Age 24, I lost my own country. Amid tear gas and police dogs, Desmond Tutu led a people against apartheid. When people decide to be free, absolutely nothing is going to stop them from becoming free. You can overcome the most horrendous circumstances and emerge on the other side, not broken. When you say you are pursuing happiness, you are not going to find it. Happiness isn't just something that feels good. Happier people, they're physically healthier, they have stronger immune systems, they even live longer. Ultimate source of happy life, inside, not outside. We <laughs> really become something, something quite special. Yes. I think at time of my death, I will remember you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, David. Um, yeah, I just, I really feel like uh, the one thing I see when I, I watch this trailer is like what they bring out in one another um, to see them inspiring joy and mischief. And, you know, if you watch the whole film or, or read the book, you really hear how much they inspire thoughtfulness when they come up against um, ideas that they don't necessarily agree upon. Um, so what I'd like to do right now is a little exercise, um, which is one of the many things I can encourage you to um, host this movie for your community. It's very easy to do if you go to their website and they offer you a ton of great materials to facilitate something with. And this is one of the exercises that they offer as a suggestion. So um, David, if you wanna bring up the first slide for me, that would be great. Um, so this is a quote from Archbishop Desmond Tutu. There's no concept we have, there is a concept we have in South Africa, the concept of Ubuntu, 
It says, a person is a person through other persons. I mean, I could not speak as I'm speaking without having learned it from other human beings. I could not think as a human being except through learning it from other human beings. So, you know, if you brought a notebook with you or you're coloring or however you think and reflect, um, you can also just do it quietly. Um, I would encourage you now to take a moment and think about um, someone who has had a positive impact in your life. Um, think about how they've influenced you and how, if at all, they continue to impact your life today. So David's gonna play a little thinking music for you. And I'm gonna give you about three minutes to just sort of sit and um, sit and think and write about that however you wish to do your reflections. David, you can turn off the music now. And um, let's go to that gallery view um, for a few minutes. I would just love to hear from a few of you, um, if any of you would be willing to share about uh, who you wrote about and how they inspire you or what this exercise did for you or brought up. Hi, hi, Susie. I see your hand up. Come on, you can unmute yourself. Thanks so much, and thanks for this evening. Um, so 
Um, a few people came to mind. The first one is my aunt, Adele Faber, who's an author. She wrote um, How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Listen So Kids Can Talk. Um, and uh, in the 70s, after her book came out, she took me under her wing and taught me how to bring this information to parents, um, how to help them to parent joyfully and effectively and with compassion. So she had a huge impact on my life. And that impact has brought me enormous joy, being able to offer this work to parents. Um, the other people that came to my mind, uh, my grandchildren who just live in beginner's mind. And it's an amazing, amazing experience, a very joyful experience to spend time with them and watch through their eyes, the world unfold. Um, and of course, my own daughter, who taught me how to be a mother, which brought me enormous joy. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Susie. Oh, ooh, I see a hand up. Hi, Carmen. Let's unmute you. Um, thank you. The person who came to mind was um, professor I had when I was at graduate school that taught me a new way of doing research and um, and what I appreciated you know what he inspires in me is you know a new way of communicating with the world and um, through verbatim documentary theater and this idea of asking a question going out and doing this information gathering and then putting it together in a way that allows a space for dialogue to include more people in the discussion. Um, and uh, I think what it encourages me to do today is to really embrace um, my own techniques around that, my own methods and of how I want to communicate with the world. And so it's always evolving. And um, I just so appreciate what he's brought to my life. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, my next question for, you know, Susie or Carmen or anyone who would like to answer it is, how does that feel in your body to do that exercise and to think about that person? What does that do for you to think about their impact on your life? Margaret. Hear me now? Yes, we can. <laughs> well, that makes me feel joyful. <laughs> kind of ironic that, you know, um, the person that I had mentioned um, actually helped me to have a voice mm -hmm. and gave me, um, you know, some recognition uh, as a person. So, and then, you know, like tonight, nobody could hear me, but I finally got through <laughs> um, writing what I did about this person. Um, actually, I could feel it sort of in my heart chakra center and also in my um, solar plexus. That's really where it like kind of bubbled up from, from my center into my heart. And um, it gave me validation. And uh, that's really where I felt it. So I'm glad you could hear me. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Margaret. I really, I appreciate that. And it's true. It's, it's really to have others who kind of can show up and inspire us and then to know that we can do that work. It's um, that we can do that for others as well. It is something that goes to our hearts. You know, it is something that really works in our bodies. It's a very healing experience to be in community in that way. So thank you. Thank you all for um, being willing to do that and to share. Um, you know, just as I was starting to work on this, I normally, when I was first sort of thinking about the book and, and the documentary and it was coming into my life, I really realized how much joy I have in my life um, and that I generally experience life in a pretty joyful way. Um, but then of course, as it will have, when I needed to sit down and start putting this together, I was in a bit of a rut. 
Um, I was on a hamster wheel with a job and I really was letting my whole life get engulfed. I'd sort of let my spiritual practices fall away to the wayside and I wasn't taking the time to go to my place of worship in the same way. I wasn't as grounded. Um, and so I knew I kept needing to get to this, but I sort of just felt like I was uninspired, um, which is crazy given all the inspiration that essentially set off this idea. Um, so finally, just one morning I woke up and, uh, and I looked at like my whole to-do list and I decided to just ignore it. And like the food shopping didn't get done and the meal prep didn't get done and the emails were not responded to nor will the calls and like the project work I had to do, none of it happened. Um, instead, I just, I went for a long walk in the park. And for those of you who know me, Morningside Park is sort of my church. Um, it's really, it's really where I go to, to worship and be in community with my tree relatives. So I took a long walk in the park and I sat with the trees and I cried. <laughs> I just kind of cried out all the stuff that had been filling me um, since having had COVID, doing this project, watching what was happening in the world. I sort of, I released it and I took a long bath that day. I soaked in Epsom salts and essential oils and I did a journey. Um, and when I came back from all of that, I sort of came back to myself and I finally remembered that, you know, the compassion that I'm always working to give others, I really have to extend that to myself too. And that the care and the service I want to show up with, if I don't show it to myself, then I can't, I can't provide it to others. Um, and so really it was sort of stepping away from that to-do list that helped me see, oh, okay. <laughs> here's what I can't handle in my life. Here's what I need to cancel or the deadlines that I actually can put off because ultimately I didn't like who I was being. You know, I didn't like how I was showing up in my home. I didn't like how I was showing up at work because it's not just what I'm doing. It's really how I'm doing it. And being able to be a joyful presence and mm. a healing presence, um, mm. it can't happen if I'm not being that for myself. So it was, it was just such an important reminder of why we have to cultivate joy. So um, if you want to bring up that next slide, David, you know, one of the central themes in the book of joy is really that joy comes from within. And um, the Dalai Lama and the Archbishop Desmond Tutu, they emphasize eight qualities um, that they find are really essential to cultivating joy as an inner resource. So these are the qualities of the mind, perspective, humility, humor, and acceptance, and the qualities of the heart, forgiveness, gratitude, compassion, and generosity. And I just want to say that if you want to dive into these in a really great workshop, there was a two-day workshop um, that our Reverend Diane Burke did for us. Um, that was just amazing. That's sort of what sparked all of this <laughs> and sparked me to read the book and look at all of this. And I, I can't recommend it enough. And you can, you can, I believe, still take that workshop uh, through video. Um, but for right now, I think I just want to invite you, we're going to do a little more writing um, in just a moment. And, and what I think is helpful for me sometimes when I'm looking at these things, I think, oh yeah, I've got this, I've got this, but take a look for a moment and look at like one of these qualities that you feel very strong in and give yourself a little time to write about that. And then one of the qualities that is maybe one of the weaker parts of your life right now that you feel you could really generate more of that, right? That might help you generate more joy in your life. So David, if you wanna bring us back the music and I'm gonna give folks about five minutes to just do, or maybe a little less, four minutes to just do a little writing and reflecting. And then um, obviously I'm gonna welcome you back to share about it again. So thank you so much. Thanks, David.
And I'm just going to put the prompt into the chat for anyone who has any questions. Thank you so much, David. So you can bring down the music. And we can go to gallery view as I would. Um, so I'd love to hear from you. What came up for you in this? Um, how do you see these qualities supporting you in your struggles? Or is there anything that you identified that you really want to focus on and develop further right now? Uh, what comes to mind? I'd love to hear from some of you. Oh, great, Dominic, please. Hi. Um, I, I wrote down that my strength is um, gratitude, and it's more from like my heart space and my mind and a groundedness. 
And I wrote that I would like to focus more on humility in like speaking in where I bring my energy into space. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. It's a hard one, the humility. <laughs> I've been tripping over it myself lately a lot. <laughs> yes, Hi, Lynn. You can unmute. Yeah. Hi, Emily. Um, so I, I think I've worked for a long time with a, a mantra that I say, which is connected to the goddess Tara, who, whose energy goes through many cultures, but I guess she's primarily Tibetan Buddhist. And um, I say her mantra uh, regularly as a practice to call forth compassion. Mm -hmm. I just feel I need that personally and I need it, the planet needs it. So, so um, that's a strength that I've cultivated. And the mantra is just for those of you who might not know, it's very short. It's Om Tari Tutari Ture Swaha. And it's just three versions of her name and I bow Swaha. And as a, for a weakness, I think perhaps acceptance. That, mm -hmm. You know, as an aging person, it's, it's really hard to see your life, your loved ones, everything changes. So that's a practice as well, but hard. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you so much. Lynn taught me that mantra. It was the first thing, first mantra I ever learned. Um, Rev Marshall. Hello. Well, I think I'm pretty balanced with um, gratitude and humor, but I could definitely focus more on acceptance. I wrote acceptance of circumstances and sometimes myself if I'm not paying close enough attention I can easily slip into an old pattern of blaming myself for things in my life beyond my control or for feeling completely valid feelings that I'm not as fluent in as the more positive ones that I was raised to be in acceptance of. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. One other person. Oh, great. Yeah, wonderful. Rob, please. So I, I think my wife considers it a weakness, but I think one of my strengths is humor. And uh, <laughs> I, as I was looking through the list, the thing that I particularly these days was challenged by was acceptance. And as I was contemplating rather than writing, it came to me that I think I, I use humor uh, to deal with what I can't easily accept. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I would have said that about my father too growing up. <laughs> Thank you. Would anyone else like to come in? Yeah, I know for myself, um, humor is a big, is a big, easy strength for me. I'm a very silly person. But um, you know, I had chosen forgiveness as something I struggle with, especially with myself. Um, but now I'm listening to all of you and I'm like, oh, maybe it's actually acceptance that I'm struggling with more than forgiveness. So it's good to hear all of you, thank you. And Allison, please, you can unmute yourself. I've been using the serenity prayer lately and I found it really, really helpful. Uh, may I have the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. 
the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Any other takers? All right, wonderful. Then, um, you know, I, why now? You know, why are we talking about this now? Why did this book come out at this time? You know, we're in the midst of so much and I, I hardly need to name it. I feel like it's kind of knocking at our doors through the newsroom every day. A lot is changing very quickly. A lot isn't changing fast enough. Um, and we're dealing with a lot of violence and a lot of scary things. It can feel crazy, you know, to stop and focus on joy. But, um, you know, I think joy has always been such an important part of surviving the difficult times. Cause it's not like any of this is, these, these times are new, you know? We've been looking at oppression. We've been looking at this violence forever. Um, it's a part of how humanity has survived. Consider the way we see the role of joy in gay pride parades or the way it's been used in more recent and longer past Black Lives Matter protests or in the civil rights movements. Um, I've seen some wonderful sit-ins of government buildings where music and dance were an integral part of the protest and not only that, but then those demonstrations really turned into demonstrations of, of culture and also of humanity, um, which is so important to show when others are trying to take away one's humanity. So, you know, it's come up again and again recently. Um, a few years ago, I can't remember how I ended up on the mailing list, but <laughs> I started getting texts leading up to the 2020 election organized by a group of people called Joy to the Polls. And that, that whole election period was so difficult. And suddenly I was getting invitations to music. I was being sent poems. I was being sent all of these things to just remind me to breathe through this period, reminding me to hold together. Um, that was a really great campaign. So, you know, I want to show really quickly one more documentary uh, or just a documentary trailer um, that I think really does a beautiful job of showing the relationship between um, hope and joy. So David, if you would play for us the trailer for Following the Ninth, that would be so great. Everything will pass and the world will perish, but the Ninth Symphony will remain. It enters your bloodstream and then changes who you are. This is just unstoppable momentum, like a star whirling through space. Tiananmen Square, where it was played over the loudspeakers during the revolution. Which created an uh, ambiance of hope for us. To the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, where it was played when the wall fell down. I wish every person on this planet could experience this moment. It seems to express most completely what human beings are struggling for what's possible for mankind. Pinochet took the power and it began a very dark time. One day I heard the Ninth Symphony. It was us having the colorful butterfly in our heart. It was fantastic. It was a uh, hope. That disaster tsunami reunited the Japanese people. What happened is just like Daiku, Daiku concert. People became brothers.
So this documentary, um, it's a, it, it, you can see it for free. You can go to the website following the ninth and um, watch it for free. It's right up there. It's super powerful. And he goes through all of these different places in the world where, um, where the ninth symphony was played by either, as you saw in, 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 um, in Chile, the women and the people would gather outside the prisons and they would sing it where the political prisoners could hear the song and be given hope. Um, it was played at the wall as it came down. It was um, in Japan, they have rooms where people literally just go and practice it near their like commuter places. And then they hold like annual concerts that are sort of these amateur concerts because it's a song that fills with so much hope. So when the tsunami came and wiped out so much of Northern Japan, they organized just a massive choir. Um, so there's one little quote I just wanna share with you for a moment that as I was working on this gathering, a friend of mine sent to me. She said, don't worry about, don't, do, I'm gonna misread it, I'm sorry. Don't be concerned about being disloyal to your pain by being joyous. And that's by Pierre Vilayat Inayat Khan in the Alchemical Wisdom. You know, and it's, it's a trap that I've fallen into myself, but you know, well, I mean, <laughs> but always, um, always I've had these opportunities mainly through community to then pull out of it again, you know, to be reminded by the people that I'm with through those hard times, whether it's mourning a friend, whether it's through some social activism, um, whether it's just being in community over another tragedy that's happened in this country or another. Um, it's really when I've come into community that I've been reminded how to laugh, how to create, how to bring up this wellspring. So what I really wanna hear from all of you right now is um, how has joy played a part in your life? Whether it's your personal life, whether it's through social activism, whether it's things that you've witnessed, you know, how are you cultivating joy? How has it served you? How have you served others with that joy? So I would love for us to go to gallery view and, um, and to hear from all of you now. Hi, Dominique, please, love to hear from you. Um, I've volunteered as a tutor in the prison system pre-COVID and also um, with the re-entry um, prisoners as they came out and we call them students at the time. And um, I just went in there joyfully, whether they wanted to receive my tutoring or whether they rejected me every single time. And it was um, a very um, re rewarding experience for both sides um, and healing because of that, because um, I, I wound up learning that going in with that attitude um, winded up benefiting both of us. Um, and it was always a good experience. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Thank you. Jacqueline, were you trying to put your hand up there before? Sure, I'll jump in. Right. Um, <clears throat> I, I feel very blessed um, because I've, I've spent 37 years of my life um, working for musicians and producing concerts. And like, I'm on my way this summer to produce a performance of the Beethoven Ninth Symphony in Vail, Colorado. And I've been involved in many, many productions of it. So I, I've had the great blessing of sharing the joy of music for my entire career. So that's, that's very um, central to my life. Um, but for me personally, as an individual, um, I, um, 
I get probably my most profound joy just from nature. And um, when you were talking about um, people in your life who've inspired joy, my, my mentor was a man who, um, you know, as a mature person, had the joy of an eight-year-old boy all the time. And we could walk down Broadway on the way to, you know, a difficult meeting about a difficult subject with difficult people. And he would stop in the middle of the block and look at the flowers at a bodega and say, you see that? You see those colors? You know, when the flowers are all out on the street. And, um, and I, that's, that's huge for me. Um, just nature itself um, is, is where I find deepest, deepest joy. Thank you for that. Marshall here, I'll share. I think I find a lot of joy in being extra kind and personable with, with strangers, especially those who are in the service industry or um, even like helping me on the phone with something, especially at this time, there's so much that could bring people down. I mean, the, I, I can't imagine the amount of complaining that, that they deal with. And I don't suspect it makes a huge difference, but at least for the moment, I really like to just be, be extra grateful and say, thank you for being here. I know this is a really tough time to be working with the public. And so that brings me a lot of joy and I hope it, I hope it spreads. I'm sure it does. Thank you, Marshall. Hi, Diane, yes. Hi, Emily, thank you so much for tonight. Um, what comes to my mind is reading many years ago, I think it was Teilhard said, joy is the most infallible sign of the presence of God. And um, my morning practice for probably the last between 10 and 15 years is both a gratitude practice and also then to pose the question which I first came across in, in a book, uh, I can't remember the name of the book, something like The Joy of uh, Appreciative Living or something like that by a woman named Jacqueline Kelm, I think. And she suggested every morning posing the question, what is one thing I could do today that would increase my joy? And so I begin every morning with that question. And what I find is that whether I end up doing that thing that I wrote down or not, it orients my attention to just noticing moments of joy, opportunities for joy, the intention of increasing uh, the experience of joy in my life and um, and that's been really really helpful really really helpful um, I look for things that inspire me that brings me joy I love to laugh that brings me joy today I sent a friend a YouTube video I came across of um, a parrot singing, do I stay or do I go? And, and just to find reasons to laugh, find reasons to laugh brings me joy. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And now there's like this whole gushing ideas of stories. Okay, Rob, we're going to hear from you real quickly. And then we're going to have to close up. Oh, I'll keep it brief then. I am cognizant of one of the things I find most joyful 
and missed the most by having to wear a mask is the joy of smiling at a stranger. Mm. Yes, absolutely. And we've all had to really work on smiling with our eyes through this pandemic. Thank you all so much. I, you have all brought me so much joy. <laughs> You have all brought me so much joy tonight, and I'm so grateful. And Diane, there is a request um, in the chat if you can write in that quote that you had just said. Thank you. And um, while Diane does that for us, I'm just going to share in closing a blessing um, from Archbishop Desmond Tutu that he had offered up in their book, The Book of Joy. Um, so a little something to meditate on as we go off. Dear child of God, you are loved with a love that nothing can shake. A love that loved you long before you were created. A love that will be there long after everything has disappeared. You are precious with a preciousness that is totally quite immeasurable. And God wants you to be like God, filled with life and goodness and laughter and joy. God, who is forever pouring out God's whole being from all eternity, wants you to flourish. God wants you to be filled with joy and excitement and ever longing to be able to find what is so beautiful in God's creation, the compassion of so many, the caring, the sharing. And God says, please, my child, help me. Help me to spread love and laughter and joy and compassion. And you know what, my child? As you do this, hey, presto you discover joy. Joy, which is not sought, comes as a gift, as almost the reward for this non-self-regarding caring for others. And with that, I thank you, and I wish you all a good night.